welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your teacher, the busy teacher. And for today's class, we will be looking at the different parts of a computer, both internal and external parts. So stay tuned for all the awesome information you're about to receive. Our first term today will be the monitor. Now the monitor is an output device which displays information in pictorial form. Now I bet that for most of your lives, you thought that that device seen there was the computer. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. It is not the computer. The computer involves a whole lot more than that. That is only the monitor and it allows you to see what you have been doing and what has been going on inside the computer system. It is also sometimes referred to as the screen. Now, how about this device class? I don't know about you, but I know that for quite a while in my life, I called this device the CPU. Oh boy, how wrong I was. This is actually the system unit. And it is simply the device that encloses all of the other interior devices in your computer system, your motherboard, all of those other things that we will look at later on in this video are stored or housed rather in the computer's system unit. We are learning so much today. Let's learn one more. This, guys, is not that nasty little rodent that runs around in your house and eats cheese. We're so wrong. The mouse is actually a device in the computer system that helps us to enter data into the computer. Remember last class where we spoke about data and input? This is one of those devices that helps us to enter data. Isn't that cool? We enter it by simply clicking options that will show on the screen. While we're on the topic of devices that can help us enter data into the computer, let's look at the keyboard. The keyboard is a computing device that can help us to enter text, characters, numbers, and other such things into the computer. I'm sure some of you are even masters of this particular computing device. Now here's another device I know you guys are masters of, the speaker. It allows you to hear sound or audio that is coming from the computer. Let's say you are a dancer like me and you want a nice song to dance to, a song that, as you would say, have a buzz. You would hear this song from your computer speaker. If your speaker is not connected to your computer, or your computer system does not have a built-in speaker, then you cannot hear sound that is coming from your computer system. Have you ever thought about how your computer is able to connect to the internet? Or how you're able to output information to a printer or a projector? The motherboard makes it possible. The motherboard and its superpower of communications and connectivity. This is what makes it all possible. Ta na na na! The moment you've been waiting for. The device you knew but never knew you knew. The central processing unit. Yes, this is the computer's CPU. Yes, guys the brain of the computer system. It is what is responsible for processing data and turning it into information. It is what is responsible for helping the input devices to communicate properly with the computer system and helping the output devices to communicate properly with the computer system. In just the same way that our brains sit on top and ensure that everything is working how it's supposed to work, the computer CPU sit in that central part of the computer and ensures that all areas of the computer are firing in the way they should. Now, do you remember in our last session where we spoke about storage? Well, this device is one of the many storage devices that are associated with the computer system. However, 
this device is actually inside our computer system. It's what is considered as an internal storage device. It is called the Random Access Memory, aka RAM. Have you ever wondered how that work that you are typing stays on your screen and you haven't saved it yet? The RAM is what is responsible for that. This is where your computer stores data before it is processed. RAM can be found in many computing devices, such as your desktop computer, your tablet, your phone, and other devices such as printers. Let us now take a look at another storage device inside the computer. This is the hard drive. Now, unlike the RAM that will only store your data or your information for a short period of time, the hard drive will store your information more permanently until you are ready to use it again. I have been giving you information throughout the entire video. So how about you give me some now? If you think you can identify the name of this device and what it does, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. Who knows, if you're a student of mine, I may have an extra 5% for you. Research, research, research. Now let's get back to business. Remember earlier when we spoke about the motherboard and its superpower of connectivity and communication? Well, now we're going to be looking at some of the motherboard's sidekicks. The first one we're looking at is the expansion card. This is an electronic card that helps to add extra functionality to a computer. Let's say your motherboard did not come with onboard graphics, but it has the expansion slot to hold an expansion card. Then you could simply put in a graphics card and then voila, your computer would now have onboard graphics. And finally, we have the network interface card. Now this card is the card that I'm sure you'll all love because this is the card that helps your computer to be connected to a network, which means guys, you will be able to have internet connectivity. Isn't it awesome? Now we've come to the end of another informative session. I hope to see you again next week. I am your busy teacher. Peace out.